This is Ask Dr. Anna, and we are going to talk today about post-traumatic growth and recovery. And today we're actually going to focus on using traditional native healing for trauma recovery. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and if you find any of the videos helpful for you, please like so that we know what's meaningful for you. I've been fortunate to meet Errol Lawrence a few years ago while trying to get a better understanding of deep inner healing. And I think it really is necessary for all of us to focus on what isn't resolved inside of ourselves and to really work on the inner game of life because that's where success really comes from. Simply focusing on the outer world, on superficial things, really confuses the point in life and uses up all of our energy focusing on superficial or non-sustaining elements of life. Errol Lawrence is a remarkable native energy healer and a band member of the Kisikuinen First Nations in Manitoba and um, Errol came about his um, healing work both intuitively as a young child but um, also through a transition that he had at a certain point in life because that's not where he started. He started with a Bachelor's of Arts degree from University of Toronto in 1993 and worked in policy development until 2007 working for uh, banks and investments and uh, he reinvented himself to focus on work as a native energy healer providing treatments to thousands of individuals and often working with trauma survivors. Errol, I just want to thank you so very much for taking the time to talk with us today um, and I want to really understand to start with uh, how did that transition from a policy developer and um, a financial consultant uh, to native energy healer come about? Well, I think that uh, many of these uh, changes actually occurred over time and they were always one of those situations where you wake up one day just knowing. So, <coughs> sorry, one of the uh, one of the things I remember as being a small kid is uh, having to deal with my mother coming home with a sore back. I said to her, listen, stand here, I'll put my hands on your back, the pain will go away. And I think she was not really uh, thinking that that would actually occur and in fact, that's what happened. And I, I had been doing all through time healing people without any recognition of why I could do this or how this comes about. I get out of university and of course society tells you to follow particular pathways. So I followed that pathway into government, into banking, into the capital markets. And then there was a, a one day where all of a sudden I realized I can't do this anymore. That day allowed me to focus on myself going all internal lots of meditation asking of questions and then you know arriving at a point where I know okay everything has to stop as of right now and allowing myself to come to that point made the transition very easy I simply had to agree to it wow and that was the difficult part how could I agree to something where I don't know the outcome takes a lot of courage doesn't it Oh, it, uh, it took an awful lot of courage and, and, and a lot of sleepless nights. But once it occurred, all the energy of the anxiety had just melted away and it allowed me to have some clarity. Okay, this is obviously where we're headed. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I'm just going to put one foot in front of the other and trust that I can get to wherever I'm supposed to get to. That's an amazing story that you just left what you knew and moved into something that was calling you. I know that you helped thousands of people, um, both in the Native community and in, in many communities, actually, and you understand that um, what it takes to really help people recover after trauma, but you're using an energy healing approach. I want to understand from your perspective, how does that help trauma survivors and what is it that you do? The explanation would go back to the understanding that everything evolves because there is the existence of energy. And one of the, uh, the, one, one of the models that came to me was that, you know, 
the body is made up of the collective energy of all beings that came before you. And as your spirit is sending its light through the soul, through the higher mind, passing through your blueprint and arriving at Earth, that it's going to be picking up all of the information and that light would be skipping off all of the residual memory of every person that came before you, allowing for the body to have existence, allowing for hair color, eyelashes, everything that had been in existence before, but tuned to your specific vibration for this lifetime in accordance with who is my mom and who is my dad. So now I have this body that looks and acts this particular way. Understandings had to go that everything goes to a zero point, and from that zero point, anything that is emerging from there would be carrying with it all history of every being that ever came before you. So if our ancestors had gone to war, been traumatized through starvation, colonization, subjugation to kings, queens, and governments, or however these things occurred, that if that energy was unresolved, that it would pass through that zero point and show up through your uh, particular expressions in life. And now all of a sudden you find yourself in a place of trauma. But in reality, you know, we have to understand that there's a history behind that trauma that may have absolutely nothing to do with you. So my approach is to ask the individual to key into the idea of what would I have to be believing in in order for uh, these events to keep taking place. So understanding that the belief is the highest vibration, target that. Underneath that vibration would come all of your emotions that would support that belief, and then we can track down what is that person going through in terms of their emotional state, and then taking it down to the slower vibration, which is the thought patterns that support the emotions, that support the belief. And if we can walk these backwards and decode this information, we would be able to allow the individual to come to their own awareness, allow that energy to be fully resolved, bringing it back to its own zero point. And now the individual has been able to recapture all of their energy. And from there, they can start the process of moving forward towards what is my feeling. You do this amazing work and actually find a way to help trauma survivors clear not only their current day trauma, but their historical trauma, and you're actually referencing some uh, uh, some current research on epigenetics, where we're starting to understand that our uh, parents, our grandparents, our you know our, our our historical trauma actually impacts us today, even if we never experience the trauma ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dog trying to be part of the show. <laughs> so, I think, I think I agree. <laughs> he, so, so I think it's very profound because what you're hooking into is something that we're starting to see in the research today, that our historical trauma, our parents, our grandparents, whatever they went through, actually gets woven into our genetic code and becomes part of our current vulnerability to feelings of anxiety, depression, and trauma, and uh, all of those feelings undermine how we cope with today's experience as well. I wonder if you could just tell me what would you recommend, because our viewers are trauma survivors themselves, some of them are healers and therapists as well, what would you recommend for those people to do in order to live to their potential today? One of the simplest approaches that I would recommend for individuals would be a process of focus, uh, using meditation to focus into originally the third eye, making connection just by asking to reconnect to the higher self. And through that reconnection, uh, asking the question, can you communicate with me? Once that communication begins, you receive the response for that. Now the object is to ask all the vital questions. What would I have to believe in for me to feel depression? What would I have to believe for me to experience such uh, despair? What would I have to believe in in terms of, you know, I'm a terrible and worthless being? How did this come about? From those questions, questions stimulate response. 
from there, you will be able to decode this information and bring yourself into a place where you can start pulling all the lines out from all the places that you've been told you have to focus your attention. Each one of those points of focus is diverting your light away from your body, away from your field, and it is being harnessed for whatever purpose. Well, if you look at these carefully, you'll be able to recognize I can live without this expression, that expression, this expression over here. And the moment you begin to say that I can live without that, you cancel the energy that is creating all of this in the first place. So you're retiring this from all of the ancestors by simply telling yourself, I'm not just curing it for me, but I'm curing it for all history. And that will allow the energy to go to its own zero point. And now, you can reinvent that energy as joy, love, laughter, happiness, expressions that actually make sense for you. So I deal with a lot of soldiers and predominantly speaking, it's not the actual action that is creating the problem. It is the emotional charges that are in by all of the collective that happens to be firing all of their guns, creating tremendous emotional charge that is anchored to the earth. The earth doesn't want it, so it's going to stimulate this in you. And now you're going to replay and replay and replay. Powerful, well, why don't powerful we cancel stuff. Yeah, and once they cancel up the charge, they can actually live with the events because they realize, oh, my goodness, I chose to be in that location. Mm. Oh, wow. Well, now that I've chose, I can forgive myself because really, in, in most cases, it's not so much trauma of the mind, it's broken heart. Yeah. And it, you would feel and express the same thing over a breakup, war, being victimized, being, uh, you know, having all of your being uh, pushed down into places of despair. You'll find out that a lot of that is only occurring just out of unawareness. Bring it to awareness changes the whole game such a profound thing let's let's recap for a moment first of all errol i just want to thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your vision of how you do your work your own transformation and what people can do to heal in their own life and let's recap first recognize that you can have an awareness or calling to change your life find the courage to follow it to recognize that you can go to your own zero point or place of full recovery where you can start to really deeply fully extinguish the historical past as well as the current traumas in your life <laughs> that's my dog wanting to be part of the show again and three i, I think you just agreed with that last point <laughs> what's that I think your dog just agreed with the last that's, point. That's what it is. He's, a, he's in full agreement. And three, recognize that the research on epigenetics is actually reinforcing everything that you're saying, Errol, that we're starting to understand that it is absolutely crucial what has happened to our families, our, grands, our grandparents, and even their ancestors, and that these things weave deeply into our DNA. And then four, recognize that you can unhook yourself from a traumatic past and find your own route to recovery and healing. And as I said before, I love the term embrace growth. So let's all embrace growth and move forward in our trauma recovery. And again, Errol, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us and sharing your wisdom. For more Ask Dr. Anna videos and information about post-traumatic growth and recovery, subscribe and like our YouTube videos at What is PTSD? Or join us at previous video episodes in our playlist, Ask Dr. Anna from the Traumatology Institute team.